Suso, tira Alessio, Suso, tira, perché non tiriamo? Ma perché non tiriamo? Gol! Alessio Romagnoli, gol! Alessio Romagnoli! And we'll start in 10 seconds, so you can count that down, because I, I already started recording. So, 5. 10, 9, 2 now. Uh, and start. <laughs> yeah, you missed it. You missed the cue. Yeah, I know. I'm waiting for these fucking dummy emojis to go off my screen. All right, there we go. And again. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Sempre Milan podcast. I'm your host, Ollie Fisher. You can find me on Twitter at Ollie Fisher, joined once again by Anthony Talgrud. Um, I think I'm going to keep the little uh, intro mishap there in the video this week. So everyone, you get to see a little behind the scenes. Um, Ollie missed the countdown and got a little mad at emojis on the screen, but you'll see. Um, oh, we're doing that now. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Torgut45. You also got Madison with us. Yeah, you guys can go ahead and follow me on Twitter at Madison underscore DT. Excellent stuff. Um, the team have given up, so we might as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, good start. Good start. Um, right then, lads. We're all a bit angry, I would imagine, after what went on on Saturday night in Florence. Um, I'm guessing the title of this, even though I haven't thought about it, for the moment is going to be something VAR related. Um, it feels like we should be recording this after a win. I'm not saying that it was our best performance of the season by any stretch of the imagination, because I don't think it was. And there are certainly decisions within the game which will come on to where we could have done better. But that was pretty much robbery. Yeah, yeah, we won that game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was good win. Yep. Good win. Easy three points. On to the next one. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, um, that was not a handball by my account. Um, it I saw that video like... that Milan TV released today where it hit his chest, and then people were saying it hit, um, I already forgot his name, but the Fiorentina defender's arm off Zlatan's chest and on Zlatan's arm. I didn't quite catch that because I didn't watch the video religiously. It was just pissing me off, to be honest. Um, but when I saw the picture after the game initially, it looked like it kind of hit his chest and arm, like almost armpit area a little lower. And I also thought it was deflected off of Dalbert, which it was not after I watched the replay. So I don't know. Um, I mean, that doesn't get called last year. It, it does this year because the rule changed. But I feel like it It just also doesn't. I don't know. It's harsh. It's really harsh, especially when it was such a beautiful goal. I mean, that was the sickest goal I've seen from Milan this season, if not in multiple seasons. But uh, I'm getting pissy thinking about it. I don't want to discuss this game long. Sorry. Um <laughs> I think it hit his inner elbow, you know, like, like right here. I think it was yeah, a very soft call, you know. Um, mm. I don't think that you call that a handball, but it was called. Um, the refs suck, and it's time to look on to the forward to the next game. Hmm. We yeah, can't as much as I would also like to, you know, just spend a minute on this. It's hard because. <laughs> What it feels like, and I, th I I think that you can deal with certain incidents in isolation and say, do you know what, there was poor communication there. VAR, sadly, at the moment, isn't a perfect system. And I think you, you could also accept it if, or as a fan base, we could accept it as, as Milan fans. We could accept it if we felt like things were balancing themselves out and if we felt like they were getting... <laughs> If we if we felt like overall we were getting, you know, the rub of the green on certain ones and on other ones, you could say, ah, we should have got that. Um, I don't know whether we should just stop here at this point. Just just continue, whatever. We'll explain it later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Madison's gone to kill a spider on the wall. Has he got it? I I, I don't want any uh, baby spiders <laughs> running around. So coronavirus. You guys spiders. could just ignore the fact that I walked away, but. No, it was hard. Thing. Anyways, continue. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I feel like uh, we could accept it a lot more if we were getting, you know, we felt like things were balancing themselves out, uh, and perhaps for everyone that went against us, one went for us. But it feels like over the last few weeks, things just haven't really been going our way. We had obviously the uh, call on Calabria in the in the Coppa Italia semi final first leg where we are looking at a completely different tie if we're going to, to Juve with a, with an advantage heading into the second leg and particularly without having conceded a goal. We didn't get that. You know, everything was centred around how VAR categorically got that call wrong, 
because the Italian Referees Association had already agreed earlier in the season they weren't going to call those anymore. And then we come to this Fiorentina game where it didn't look like a handball. By definition, it's not because it didn't give uh, Ibra any discernible advantage. You know, if he if his arm was outstretched, you could say that it assisted his control, but the ball just fell down from his chest. You know, I feel like we've had another one like that this season as well. But mm-hmm. um, And then, as you say, it was an amazing goal. The, the trucking run that he went on was fantastic and it just kind of embodies everything that he's brought to the team. And it was a, a great finish as well. I went absolutely mental. And then I couldn't believe when I saw that they were checking it for VAR, but I couldn't believe that they reached a decision within, certainly inside a minute, probably inside 30 seconds. It was as if they couldn't wait to give that handball. And that that really pissed me off. Um, And then, of course, you've got the other controversial incident with um, Dalbert, who uh, pulled back Ibra, who, I don't know. I mean, you know, I guess if that's Rafael Liao or if that's Rebic, if that's someone with a bit more speed, I would say they're definitely through on goal. I thought that perhaps actually the initial yellow card call on that might have been correct. But then they went to the VAR and saw that it's Ibra, you know, he, he is going to get a shot away there and it probably does end up being a goal because it's Latan. Decided to give a straight red card. The, there were mixed protests about it, I guess. You know, they, they, they weren't totally up in arms. And then the penalty, man. The penalty is the thing that annoys me the most because apparently, according to various media reports, the uh, referee Calvarese tried to justify it after the game to Maldini and to um, to other members of the management by saying, oh yeah, uh, Romagnoli touched the ball, but it didn't change direction because of that. And it's like, what what, what else could it have been? Yeah, the what? wind. <laughs> that is just like, I don't get it. I, you know, I said before, VAR is an imperfect system. I guess we have to live with certain things where they need to come up with some like blanket rule, whatever. But the, it feels like it's taken a massive step backwards this season. Mm-hmm. It really does. It feels like we're talking about it more and more. I think every big decision in that game, all through that we just discussed, I think the ref got wrong. I don't think it was a red card on Dalbert. I don't think it was a handball. And I certainly don't think it was a penalty. Um, I, I think that's a... It just, it's, it's really bad. And we've had that back to back to back. You know, obviously, the other game we, we already went over, the exact same referee looked at the exact same call in the game the very next day didn't give it. Um, and, and then we had this situation. It's, you know, there, there's got to be a way to almost retroactively review these things. I mean, if the play continues where it's a penalty like that, if the refereeing associations already agree that they're not calling that, they should be able to retroactively retract that. I know that's not fair in the spirit of the game, and I don't know if that's the right solution, but there's got to be a way, you know, even with this, this handball, since they reviewed it after a goal, if they all agree in this association that, hey, that probably was the wrong call, that, then retroactively let the goal stand or something. Obviously, I'm speaking from bias, but th- there's just got to be a way to referee the referees, and that's what VAR's supposed to do, but it's just referees helping referees, you know? Right. And yeah, it is. I don't mean that <clears throat> maliciously. It's just like they're, they're on a team, you know? It's a click, whether we want to admit it or not. They want to back each other because that's – that's how you do it, just like the players would back each other. So there's got to be a way around it. I, I don't know if, if it's former players doing it, but then you, you get team bias, player bias. I, I don't know. You know that There's a solution out there, and unfortunately I don't think anyone has it at the moment, but there's definitely a clear issue and it needs to be addressed. You know, as an AC Milan fan, I absolutely agree. But as like, like a fan of sports, don't let a call come down to deciding a game. Play well. well. Play well thing. enough. It should have been a two-zero win, but there were play, so bad calls. Play well enough where that call goes against you. All right, well let's regroup, do better. You know, like it sucks, but, but don't let one call decide a game. But it wasn't one. I, I, I mean, this was no this was exactly. Off the nets. And, and I agree with you, Maddie, one hundred percent. I'm big on that. Like I, I'm a big combat sports guy. You know that. I'm always against like never leave it in the hand of the judges. All that good stuff, but when it's one call taking away a goal, okay, bounce back, get another goal. We did that. But then there's a second call giving them a goal that shouldn't have been. And, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just it one thing. It is enough to, to, to drive you mental. Absolutely. And, I mean, you guys know I, I reacted very poorly after the game and was pretty upset for a few days. I'm still upset today, but, you know, here we are. It's just it's <clears throat> it's frustrating because you could 
you started this season, man. We just we started at such a low point. We built back up. There were so many highs, and then we, we were starting to drop back down again. And it started the week before Inter, and it just right when you think, okay, we're gonna pick it back up, we're back on track, things start crashing down, and this time it's not our fault, and that's the yeah. shittiest part. If it is our fault, we all suck it up and say, look, we're trash. We we got to make changes in the summer, but this time it's like, what more can we do besides scoring 17 goals per game? That's the only way we could do it, but it's just it's a difficult one and i agree with um i agree with the idea that the referees are kind of protecting each other they are they're all part of essentially the same the same group the same body but the the problem is that you know you might want to say as a fan surely it's in the best interest of the game that the majority of decisions are you know the wrong decisions are overturned by VAR, but there are actually people and there are actually things that are monitoring how many times VAR overturns decisions. And I think that they've, they've sort of got that in the back of their mind and they think the more decisions that are overturned, the worse that the standard of refereeing looks. And that probably should ring true. But that's why it comes back to this idea that they're protecting each other, looking mm-hmm. after each other. I'm, the, I'm not, I don't have enough... You know, I don't think there's enough minutes in the day for the whole conspiracy theory thing, even if people are revisiting it like like they have been. I've seen on social media and stuff like that. And I also agree with the idea of... <laughs> yeah, you. Um, I also agree with the idea that you should never leave it in the judges' hands. I totally agree with that. But perhaps the Juve game, in a sense, was the perfect example of what else could we have done. You know, we, we went into that game... Um, we weren't exactly riding a wave after the after the 4-2 derby defeat, but we did enough to beat Juve that night. We were one nil <laughs> up, and I think most would agree that we we would have been fair one nil winners in that game. And then that decision went against us in in the very sort of final mu- few moments of the game, and they come away with a one one draw. How do you then turn around and tell the players, well, you should have done more to make sure we won that? It was literally the one incident that went against us in that in that game, and it ended up costing us the result. I agree with that Fiorentina game. I don't think we handled the the final 10 minutes particularly well with a man advantage. Um, I didn't think we, we attacked particularly well. I thought we were sloppy while we were in possession. We actually looked like the team who had 10 men at times. Um, and then... Could you I make think a lot of it came down to the substitutions, though, and I don't think they're Pioli's fault. I think he was just dealt a bad hand, you know. Begovic coming on for an injured Donnarumma. Um, he did well. Gabia coming off for Musacchio because he was yeah. hurt. Castillejo coming off because he was hurt. I mean, these are changes that he wouldn't have made if if under normal circumstances, you know. Didn't Gabia start the game? He did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I don't – I know you said he was hurt. I don't think he was, was he? Gabia, Donnarumma? yeah. yeah. Oh, was he? He oh, said he had he? Um, some muscular like tightening in his in his thigh or calf. Well, thank, or thankfully, there's um, nothing come of that. Um, there were yeah. a few players who were doing some recovery on on Monday today at Milanello, but he wasn't one of them, so it clearly can't be too big of a problem. Um, but yeah, I thought he had a decent game to be fair. And Begovic did as well. We could be looking at, at zero points if it wasn't for that save that he made on Caceres. And it sounds like Donnarumma may miss the Genoa game with a with a slight ankle sprain. So it's nice that we do have a an actual backup that we can kind of. To relax. be fair to Begovic, he did get a hand on the penalty. It was just yeah, I guess the right way. I I yeah. thought it was a good pen. I thought it was a good pen. It was a good pen, and honestly, aside from it not being saved. It was fantastic effort from Begovic. He he did not move off his line at all. Um, who who took the penalty? Pulger. Pulger. He, uh, yeah, Eric Pulga, yeah. Yeah, he did all the stutters, everything, tried to get a move out of Begovic, and he stood firm. And that's something that many goalkeepers don't do. And to be honest, I don't think Donnarumma would have done. I think Donnarumma would have No, he wouldn't have. Pushed. Yeah. He, he does that, and I think it would have been an easier goal for him. Early. I think he Donnarumma does. gives away where he's going to dive a, a little bit sooner. Um, but also... You know, no criticism towards Donnarumma because his penalty saving record's actually pretty good. So yeah, it's solid. Uh, he'll be able to yeah. learn stuff from from Begovic without a doubt. I think. And I think that's that one of them. Cool. That Stonewall readiness. I mean, that's that's impressive. Many <laughs> experienced keepers don't do that. So I was happy to see that. Obviously, sad to see it went in, and unfortunately, that's just age. I think just body getting a little weaker. You know, but to make a low save like that or to to get a hand on it. If Donnarumma did the exact thing Begovic did, he would have saved it, you know? Yeah, I don't think he would have. Honestly, I think Begovic did better than Donnarumma 
would have done in that position. For no, sure. I, I agree. I'm saying it yeah. don't do the exact same thing. That <laughs> right. No, yeah, yeah. Strong enough to keep it out. Sli- I think he's so. done a room slightly more agile. It feels yeah. like he has a slightly bigger frame and he, he, you know, he's more likely to touch the other post, I guess. But I feel like he's splitting yeah. hairs with a Vito. really good, really good penalty. Um, but uh, we've seen like, what, like a game and a half now, roughly, when you factor in the um, the uh, substitution when some Simon Kier came off for Gabby. We've seen about a game and a half of him now. He looks pretty good. He actually looks, yeah. you know, you can't judge him based on 130 minutes, whatever it is, but. He does kind of look like the real deal. Like him and Romagnoli yeah, he, sort of complement well. each other surprisingly well. He's doing I'm very well, happy, yeah. With It could have turned out much worse, and I think it's going in his benefit for sure. Yeah, I don't think it's particularly easy now for um, for Musaccio to get straight back into the team. I really don't. No. He's falling down back in order. Yeah, I kind of feel bad for him, but at the same time, he did so... It cost us so many points off of stupid mistakes. Um, I feel like in easy wins, and that's what happens. I do think we have, uh, outside of all the injuries we've experienced, we actually have a good amount of depth right now at center back, and that's something we haven't had in a while. Because oh, Musaki is not a bad fourth-choice center back if he's behind <laughs> Kier and apparently Gabia, who's been solid. So, How I mean, long do you think he's going to be at the club, though? Do you think he's going to leave this summer, or do you think he'll... Uh, who? Musakio. Uh, he might lead this summer. And what are his wages like? They're more than Kier and obviously Gabia, so maybe, yeah. Because we only need bad. three or four, you know? Three center backs, yeah, right? I, um, I think our depth situation looks better now Gabi has turned out to be good. If right. we'd have thrown him on in that game against Torino and he had struggled to deal with Belotti, you know, I, I think we might be talking about something slightly different here, especially with the bad luck that we've had with the other two guys. And obviously Duarte is out long term. Um, <laughs> Duarte. <laughs> and, and then you look at particularly the fact we don't have a backup left-sided centre-back. If Romagnoli were to get injured in the next game, we would be in deep shit. And then, you know, you always want to try and play those same three, you know, the left-back, left-sided centre-back, right-sided centre-back, because we've got no consistency at all at right-back. And that was another thing that I think was lacking. Um on Saturday, I was surprised that Calabria got dropped. Uh, I I don't get it. I, I really don't get it. I don't I get what Conte he has. He must. Related. Yeah, I thought that, or I feel like Conte just has this vision of having two fast outside backs, but Conte just is not fast anymore, mm. and he's not very good at defending. No, he's not. He's not. He's not the player that we thought we were signing. <laughs> yeah. You know, we we have talked about this before, but. I just think for balance and everything, Calabria is a better defensive fullback. Right. Um, it, it makes more sense to have one being offensive, one being defensive. You know, cover both yeah. bases. Especially with Gabia, who's breaking into the team. Him and Calabria played together in the youth team, right? Yeah. So yeah. they have that connection there. Yeah. So, and I and we've think... seen in two games now, Gabia get forward on on separate occasions, which is kind of nice. You know, it's, yeah. it's it's helpful to see that a uh, little extra push. As long like as he that. drops back. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. but just to have that kind of right, chemistry yeah, no, going sure. with, yeah, one up, one Yeah, down. I won't, I won't, I won't criticize Conti too much because it's not like he made an error that led to a goal or anything like that. I would just like to see some more consistency in the selection um, from from Pioli. But like you say, perhaps Calabria coming back from an injury of his own was running on a little bit of an empty tank, and he, he needed to make the change. But I hope that. If, if both were fully fit, he'd see that Calabria is the better fit, in my opinion, anyway. Um, and then the midfield, all right, again, Kessie and Benesse. Benesse looks slightly better, but Kessie, you know, he knows his role. Um, and then Rebic, bagging again. Yeah, he's now the lone top scorer overall and um, in the league for us. So that's impressive. And unfortunately, it's gone under the radar because of the way the game ended, but... Yeah, the man's been unstoppable. It's definitely not who I thought would be the revelation for the second half. No, we so, talked so much smack about him at the beginning of the season. He's just completely turned it around. Yeah, and, and props yeah, to him. Yeah, I, I don't Same feel like we were... Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was one of those who, who said that we should give Castillejo go over Suso when he was struggling for form, um, but... I didn't expect him to be this good. Would like uh, just a little bit more in product in him, but, you know, it's fine when Rebic is scoring and when, 
Ibra looks good and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, with Rebic, I won't say any of, any of us wrote him off. It was just a case of he needs to get an opportunity somewhere and he needs to grab it. And then it came. I may have wrote it, him it off. Seemed like I, it, I wrote him off too. I was like, who? Probably, this guy on that, isn't doing it. probably on attitude and not on ability though. Yes. And it, um, it seems like the attitude yeah. changed. I don't know what it was, but that was one of the only players that we signed over the summer that I was actually excited for. So I think that's why I wrote him off so quickly is because I wanted him to do well. And then all the signings I thought were going to be poor did pretty decent. And he was doing poor and it just continued. And there was like three or four games towards the end of the first half of the season, right before his resurgence that he, he just looked God awful. And, and I was just fed up. So I was done with him. And then the very next game, he's got that brace and I was like, Oh, okay. Good for you. And then it hasn't stopped, so it's great. Yeah, it was the um, Spal game in the cup when it, when he got when he got a start, and it was the first 20 minutes. His first touch, he looked like Bambi on ice, like the ball was just flying everywhere. And then I think it was just a goal. Getting that first goal just gave him the confidence. And I thought initially that he was doing the celebration to the crowd, you know, where so he put I. his fingers in his ears, and then it turns out that is just his celebration. He does it, does yeah, it, has done it anywhere he plays. <laughs> Speaking of anywhere he's played, um, he's obviously played at Fiorentina and barely got a barely got a crack with them there. They loaned him out to Hayes Verona. They loaned him out to Leipzig. Uh, I think they, could, they loaned him to another club before they sold him uh, to yeah. Eintracht Frankfurt. I thought he did two or three seasons in Germany while owned by Fiorentina. I can't remember. Yeah, that but sounds. He only played that. like fifteen games for yeah, Fiorentina. Some, yeah. I think it was less than that. I think he scored three goals in seven games for uh, Fiorentina. Uh, that might just be in the league, but I don't think that's too bad. But no, whatever, they didn't see all. any didn't see any value in him. I think it'd be fair to say they wrote him off. And uh, yeah, you could tell by his celebration he was pretty fired up to score against them. Yeah, I don't know if it was just because it was against them. I think going A in the lead for the game, <sighs> B becoming our top goal scorer, and C the Fiorentina aspect. But I, I think it was a combination. It wasn't just like got one over the old club. I, I think he's well beyond being butthurt about Fiorentina. Talk well, about getting one it, over on your old club. Let's not. No, 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 no. Hang on. But the Rebic thing, he didn't just celebrate the goal. He walked over to the Fiorentina bench and shouted a load of stuff at whoever. Oh, he did? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, when really? It, yeah, when you watch it back, it is quite funny. But he goes over and, you know, I think the team are kind of trying to drag him away to just celebrate normally and he just keeps shouting and I don't know who he was shouting at. I don't know what he was saying and to whom, but hmm. it, is, I, it, it can't be that many players still there from his time there. No, so no it must have been ownership some staff. is different, management yeah. is different, staff is different. Yeah, I don't know. The, there will be a story in there somewhere, though. Yeah, uh, and I surely there, there's got to be a, like even someone small, like a, a medical trainer, who said this guy's just not good enough for Fiorentina or Might something that. that was there. Yeah, something small that he remembered, you know. I you didn't really like look that. at the at the comments, you know, that were made from the Fiorentina camp before the game, but maybe one of them said something about how, you know, he wasn't good enough that ship sailed and he just wanted to to prove a point. But I found that interesting. And then yeah, we've got the um the Kutra thing. Um yeah. I don't yeah. I don't I think this is a non issue personally. Kutrone has always been a passion merchant or whatever, you know, whatever the term is nowadays. Um, he celebrated every goal way over the top for, for Milan in a good way. We all loved it. We all absolutely loved it. You know, the way he kissed the badge and everything like that. And then, um, you know, I think the phrase one way loyalty perhaps does apply in this sense. People expect um, people expect him to, to behave with with absolute 100 percent non-emotion in a game against his former team. Uh, especially when something good happens for his current employers, you know, the ones who actually pay his wages like the late penalty, they expect him just not to celebrate. And then people are kicking off because he wanted to take the penalty. He's a striker. It would have been his first goal for the club. Really? Can we blame him for that either? Like I'm seeing people yes. say he's a snake, say he's a traitor. What for? He got pushed out. He got told he wasn't wanted here. And I think he wanted to send a message to the people upstairs and not the fans. I agree with that 100%. He was pushed out and wronged by Milan. But that said, the fans are the, the, the life bread of the club, you know, and 
and he knows that. He, I still love him every bit. Nah, I, I, what happened. I didn't like him for a while before he left either, but so there's that. I didn't like that he was begging to take the penalty because he's not even a first string striker and he's not even their first string penalty taker. He's not even the second string, you know, and yeah. And like, yeah. So there's no reason to be begging to take that when you're nowhere near the top of the pecking order against your former club that you claim to love as much as he claims. No, but he wanted, he wanted, he wanted, he wanted, um, he, t- he won it. So, you know, I think he wanted to, um, to take it, to get his first goal and for that and to be that. the headline against any other club. I get that, but I don't know. I feel in that situation, you let your main goal scorer, your main penalty taker take that. So you could get the points for the club because that's what you need as a team. And, you know, you could celebrate with them, but, respectfully I, I don't think the way he did was respectful he um he wouldn't have done anything like that at San Siro I'm fairly convinced I think the Fiorentina fans have really taken to him and perhaps he wanted to give a little bit back to them by you know showing where his his loyalties lie now and that is that. with his current employers and the ones who were paying him whatever 70 grand a week you know but I, I, before the game he even was like in the Milan locker room you know and and I get it they're friends but still he's He's still being flirtatious with Milani. He's still trying to romanticize his career with us. And then to go and do that during a game, I don't know. I, I don't think it's, it's a, different a career situation. thing. It, 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 it goes beyond his football career. He grew up supporting the club. Right. He came through the youth. So, it's so too embedded. That? It's too embedded in him. But, I agree. Milan's but, too embedded. So, so you know, chill out when you have an opportunity to business. scorn us. Business but, is business, isn't it? You know, he's a guy who's going to be passionate. But you could no score matter. a goal and not celebrate against them. That's fine. I wouldn't have blamed I him. I don't think he would have celebrated. Score. And I, he said he wouldn't have. But I don't think in a penalty situation, you beg to take it to score against your old club. That's different. I think, I think when you scored are, from open play and didn't celebrate, I wouldn't be mad. It's, you know, it happens. Former players. When you want to try and prove yourself at your new club, though, what better way to do it than scoring a penalty against your old club? There are some for, teams as well. For. Some teams have a have a dedicated penalty list, whereas others don't. They they go by a um, in game decision, and sometimes it's the well, person Fiorentina who wins does, the penalty. Though, taken. If you look, it's always uh, Pilgar. He he scored yeah. two penalties against us this season. Well, I, he I, takes I, all their penalties, and then I, behind yeah. is, um, Aza missed one against us at the beginning of the season, though too. He did, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. They have a list. They have a designated taker, and you know you saw everyone taking the ball from Cutroni to give it to Pulgar. So they all know that. They know that's the order. Maybe he didn't know that, but he's. Been, it's not like he, it's his first day at the club. He's been there. He knows now. He definitely knows now. I don't know. I I just think in that situation, you'd be happy you won the penalty for your team. High five your, your teammates, but don't beg to take that penalty. Any other penalty? Sure, go for it. Make a statement. Would it have been a? Would it? I don't think it would have been as big a story if he'd have even whispered in Paul Garcia, "Please let me take this one." I you agree. Know, it was the if fact he that he done gets, that. That's fine. But I think Cutrone. It was now. The, we all know he's baggy, like. A, though, we all know it. he's like a child in that he's. I don't he's mean like child. immature, but I mean like he's over animated and you know he, he's always mm-hmm. that way. Um. But yeah, I think it's a bit of a non-issue. I think in the in it is the a non-issue, but I don't think anyone is a lot or should be laughed at or yelled at for being upset about it. I think that's a completely fair emotion, especially given the rest of the game. Emotions were high, and then to see someone that chances are you were a big fan of, really happy at your club, do that, it, you're you're mad, you're offended, no matter what. I I might have celebrated if you'd scored as well, because I still think we properly screwed him over. So. I do I think too. screwed him over, but I wouldn't I, have scored I, him. Scored I wouldn't him. have cheered, no, but I, I, I think smiled. that we screwed him over, and I, and I would have, I would take him back at the club. And no. I would I have smiled have... in an ironic way of like, this is just typical shit for us. Yeah, no, I thought he was a shoe in the score. To be honest, I fully expected an open play goal from him, but um, just as a as a brief aside before we move on, Roman Yule, he. I'm fairly sure he got the ball. I haven't yet seen a 100% conclusive angle, but I've seen the one where the ball changes direction, and for me, that's enough, but the VAR chief decided to, for whatever reason, disregard that. Did he need to make that challenge? Um, No. I don't know if he did, but to Romagnoli's credit, he's made that challenge 
multiple times in that game specifically. He made it against Juve, he made it against Torino, and he made it against Inter. He's been doing it the past few weeks. When you're on a hot streak of making these incredible slide saves, of course you do it. it it's muscle yeah. memory. You're going to. So I don't blame him for doing it. Do I think he needed to? Probably not. I think he could have ran Cutrone out. Um, but there's also the risk of Cutrone, you know, sliding it across him. And and with it being Musacchio, who we all know is prone to mistakes in the box, Roman only made a calculated decision. And I don't think it was the wrong one. I think the wrong decision was the ref calling it because it mm-hmm. wasn't a penalty. I, I don't I think, he, think he needed to do it. I think it was muscle memory. He got the ball, and it was just the ref making a bad mistake. Yeah. Did, the I, ref, did they even go to VAR? I mean, obviously said the VAR chief yeah. disregarded it, but I don't think oh, they reviewed it. I don't I, think he went to the screen, no. Yeah, I don't think he did. No, they didn't go to the screen, but the VAR chief looked at it and said, stay with your right. original decision. You don't need to. Because there's three, there's basically two things that can happen. You know, the VAR guy can take one look at it and say, no, you got that right. Or he can say, you need to take another look at it. And then that's yeah. when he goes to the screen like he did with the handball. Um, and then he decided to stay with it. So that just baffled me that he didn't go to the screen. It was such right. a big call in a big Two game. Two game-changing and, decisions against And then me. to, uh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't want to go around in circles here, but it's two points dropped, top four's gone for me now. You know, if we can't see out a game like that, yeah. I, regardless I of what happened in agree. wise I mean, technically, this is the closest we've been to top four, but that's because there's a game in hand, and we would still need... <laughs> four games worth of wins and four games worth of drop points between Roma and Atlanta to get it. Um, and Napoli for that matter. But I, yeah, to me, it statistically, no, it's possible, but I didn't think we were getting it. Unfortunately, that's what Ibra's automatic renewal clause depends on. But do you think given the changes he's made to this squad, do you think we still give him another year anyways, even if we don't hit champions league? Don't think it matters. I think we'll sit down and, and talk about it with him and probably with Raiola as well, but I don't think he'll stay. I don't think he'll stay. I I'm think he doesn't. But I, I think he'll yeah. he'll say that he came in and it depends what he wants out of this. You know, does he want to leave on a high whereby people say, you know what, he came for six months, he gave it everything, he was still by far our best player despite being 38 years of age, and that's the way that he walks into the sunset. Or does he give it another year, hearing that we've got an ambitious project lined up or whatever it may be, and he's the one who helps spearhead us back into the top four or whatever it may yep. be? You, you know think what? it depends you on that? I think it depends totally, on that. You can't totally rule out his last thing for Milan being him lifting the Coppa Italia trophy. You know, stranger things have happened. We might go to Juve and do the business um, with all the fixtures they've got knocking around and stuff. Uh, even though he's banned from that second leg, whatever. You you just can't rule out totally that that might be his 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 last moment. Um, but I I don't know how I feel as well about us spending that extra six million that it would take to keep him around for next season when we could potentially. This sounds awful. You might shout at me for this, but we could potentially use that salary that we would save and put it towards a longer term solution like Dries Mertens or maybe even Cavani but I think he'd be a little bit more expensive you know I, I'm worried that if we were to try and extend the honeymoon for an extra 12 months you know two months oh into it, he, he gets a serious injury or he really doesn't have it anymore or you know um we've already heard that he's sort of suffering from muscle fatigue between games and stuff which is totally understandable um, but he hasn't had but, a real break since the MLS season ended, you know? I mean, he had a, obviously a month, but... He's still in exceptional shape, you know? It, he yeah. is. Um, and it's not just like he's the only one who tires. I think we, in in both the Torino game and the Fiorentina game, the whole team has been tiring out. And I think it's because Pioli's demanding more with the press. And we look... We don't have the midfield depth to keep doing it, to be honest. Um, I'm worried that... We're gonna burn out. This is the thing. Like, if you're if you're a real sort of glass half full, you would say, well, we've still got Atalanta, Roma, um, and Napoli still to play. If we take nine points out of nine, as unlikely as it is, then who knows where we might end up? But I look at those games and think, with the, the thin depth that we have, we could begin a slide back down the table. You know, we're only like four points off the bottom half again still. So, um, I. <sighs> I'd just be responsible from this point onwards now and say we need to make sure we finish in that top six. We really do need to make sure we finish that. I think that his renewal depends on 
what our plans are for next season. Like if we're planning on bringing in a top manager, if we're pl- planning on bringing in three or four players. Um, but then also if we win Copa Italia, I I think the chance of him coming back is less because that's such a high note to go out on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. And I would I would I would be happy with that. If that's his Sit. ride into the sunset right. moment, then yeah. Fine by that. I'll set yeah. that as my phone wallpaper, no problem. Unfortunately but, um, we, that we, game's before the last game of the season. Yeah, I just not let him play. <laughs> Stick him on the that's the one we're going to as well. <laughs> no, no, you better fucking yeah. play that game. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, oh, he's getting an injury before that, isn't he? But that's if we even get to go. The entire rest of the season might end up getting played behind closed doors at this at this point. But we'll come on to that because we did get a good question from Ludwig Spazio who says, what would you choose? It's kind of in relation, but what would you choose? Europa League qualification and Pioli stays on as head coach or we miss out on the Europa League and get a top-notch coach of your choice among the realistic candidates that we've been linked with? So, okay, my, my options are top coach, miss out on... Top six, Europe. and we decide to stay with Purely because they assume he's done a bad job, or we miss out on top six altogether, no more European football, and we throw money at, at another coach. It depends who the coach is. Top six, keep Purely. I, I want stability. Uh-huh. Yeah, if, if we... Yeah. I don't know. I, I think Pioli. Is, yeah, I love Pioli. Because I if love we get the, top four, the the desire to get like a bigger name manager is there, but it's like, who deserves to stay more than Pioli if he could bring us from 17th to, to top four? You know, if, if we get top six, he still deserves it as well. If we don't get that, then I have no problem going back to square one because it's, we might as well be anyways. If there is a takeover, if there is a project, if there are key reinforcements. I mean, if we're just year zero to have another year zero, then it's not worth it. But it's a big if that we really can't answer directly yet. No, we are still in February. And, and I think um, Maldini did a really honest interview after the game against Fiorentina where he came out and said, look, it's natural in football to, to have sort of a, a management who all have different visions and, and there are problems in terms of those different visions. Um, and I think that that's where we're at at the moment and neither... For me, it still feels like a Boban and Maldini against Gazidis in whatever's going on uh, with regards to future appointments and stuff like that. You know, I I then think about how Pioli must feel in all of this when he's got one guy in Maldini coming out and backing him, whereas all the media reports are saying everything else, and Gazidis is coming out and 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 saying that things will be evaluated between now and the end of the season. And I just think that. Are the circumstances really going to be there at any point in the future for Pioli to properly succeed? Is he doing everything that he can to get this team playing the best possible football because he knows he's only got another three months in the job? You know, is he the guy to take us at that next level into the top four? We won't know I don't give think, him a full season. I don't think it's about is he the next guy to give us the top four. I think it's about is he the guy who's going to... St- stabilize the club because yeah. regardless if we, if we get top four next season if we extend his contract for the year we get fifth place right outside top four teams playing great then we can go get a top manager who we can be like this is what we made right yeah i Take think here or we can hire a gm paulo who will fuck it all up again I, yeah, that's true. That is true. I, I think um, for a lot of fans, it will feel like we're, we're going. We, we, it's deja vu. We're repeating the same scenario whereby you know we we start a season badly or we have a bad stretch in a season. It's like, well, there goes top four again. You know, let's have another revolution in the summer. Bring in this guy. Bring in new players. All that kind of stuff. And um, it seems like the only thing that we haven't tried at this point is probably the two options that are, that were listed there in the question. We stick with a guy who perhaps hasn't, you know, the the results haven't really been there as such. He's got nine wins out of 20, I think it is now. Um, So that's in the league. How Um, many of those games were with Piantic, though? Yeah, it's a fair point. Uh, Things have improved, but, you know, we've still got that murderous row of games coming up once again where we... We play the likes of Juve, Lazio, Roma. Um, obviously, still got to play uh, 
um, Napoli, who are now level on points with us again. You know, they they appear to be recovering from what looked like a mid-table season for them. Um, Is the Juve so, game home or away? Home. I bet we at least get a point there. Juve has been not. playing like dogs. Yeah, this has been Juve's worst season for yeah. a while. Yeah, I'd like. Still to think have... they take the league. I would like to see Lazio take the league, just because it's not Inter or Juve. But we had all... the chance as well to. We we were in talks to get um, Igli Tare, who is Lazio's sporting director, and I just feel like I can't I can't overly criticize anything that um, Ricky Massara is directly responsible for, and I almost feel like Maldini and Bob Aran, Bob Aran are acting as sporting directors at this point. And if there is one of the three that I would say could probably leave for the right right replacement, it would be um, Masara. But, you know, we had the chance to get Tare and you look at the recruitment job that he's done at Lazio and the team that he's built. And then they gave Simone Inzaghi the time. You know, remember, he was only meant to be originally... Um, oh, God, whose assistant was he? Be, uh, he was the assistant I to... I want to say yeah. the assistant well, to what be... what happens when you give him time. He was the well, and if you think somebody. about it, in recent history, the only coach we've given extra time to has been Gattuso. And when we gave it to Montella him... Montella, we too. Off. Okay, true. Montella, too, but he was always bad. Well, when we gave it to Gattuso, we were one point off Champions League. Right. And then things went backwards. The, but, the, those are the only... You know, the, the, the back to the original question, those are the only two options. There is no point sacking purely unless we have a top coach lined up you know don't go for what is a top coach gonna do with this team well uh, i'm going based on the assumption that if we can attract a top coach it's because we've promised them a money to spend b you know a, a project of some description you don't just you don't just attract a top coach by having absolutely no plan in place or anything like i i acknowledge that we are probably not an attractive prospect for like some max allegri at the moment um that's why i kind of like the rumours that, that Rani does actually want the job and he, he fancies the challenge of turning us around um, like he has done other clubs. Um, but I understand also that there is a risk factor involved because he's only really done it in Germany. Um, but yeah, I don't really know. I, it, we're in February. We're in February. Things will become uh, much clearer in March and then in April and, and we'll see where we are. It's like the Gattuso situation all over again. Um but yeah, that's it. And then we've got Genoa on Sunday. Um, they're struggling this season. You know, I watched them yeah. against Lazio and they played well. They played well enough for, for me to think that they could cause some problems. But also, you know, it's a Sunday lunchtime game. Oh, sorry, Sunday two o'clock game for us. Or, or three o'clock, something like that. It's an early um, one. It's 4.30 it's it's one for me. Uh, so it's a 6.30 game. Yeah, and, and we always yeah. do bad. And but, it might be behind closed doors. Yeah, but that's a better thing in my opinion. I think it's bad. Uh, I think I think our players have been thriving off of the hype lately. Yeah, but you know, if if it's one of the Sunday lunchtime games or Sunday early kickoffs and things are going as they normally do, you know, pretty badly, it's better not having the crowd to get on the players' backs, in my opinion. Which they which they do. You know, I don't care what anyone says. When things yeah. aren't going well, the crowd um, make everyone very aware of it. But I think we'll win this one pretty comfortably. I think Pioli will will say go out and send a message here um, that we're still very serious about finishing in the top four and that we're going to run it as close as we possibly can. And to do so against a side that's pretty much in turmoil, you know, they've got no stability. They've been through three different head coaches this season. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they, they're just not not really firing at I, all this I season. They general... might go down. Very well may go down, yeah. Yeah. And that would be massive, you know, for a big club. Um, they're certainly the size of, like, a Hayes Verona, who've been a bit of a yo-yo club recently. Uh, they're probably bigger than them. And they've just been horrendously mismanaged. And funnily enough, that's the team that we seem to assign most of our players from for the for the, um, yeah. for the last few years. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I'll say 3-0, th- Edja. I'm sorry, did you just go on this tangent about how this might be a rough game and then say we win 3 nil. I say it's better if it's behind closed doors. I don't think the pressure will be there and we'll send a message by winning comfortably. So 3 I thought you were being negative. Maybe I was just missing. I am generally negative, so I'd forgive you for that. Uh, um, I think I think it's going to be scrappier than it needs to. I'm going to say 
one oh. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say if it's behind closed doors, it's gonna be way more scrappy than it needs to be. One nil as well. Cool, that's good. Um just quickly to round it off, did something today. You probably didn't read it because I don't think either of you read what I write, and that's fair enough. Um picked out five free agents that we should look at signing. Quick yes, no, why, whether we should sign him. Uh Dries Mertens. Yes. Yes. One of the best Ibra, strikers in the league. Yeah. Ibra replacement, scored loads of goals in Syria. Yeah, makes perfect no brain, sense. Right? Yeah. Um Thomas Munier, we've had a lot of problems at right yes. back. Yes, he I think he's one of the best right backs out there. I think it's a travesty that he hasn't been renewed already at PSG, but um yeah, I would sign him twice in a heartbeat. Agree. Might might still renew. That's one that's you know, there's there's yeah. talks that he might still renew. Um Matic from Man United. No. Pay cut? If if I say he takes a pay cut. It, it depends on what the wage would be because he would bring some much needed experience to the situation, to the to the position. I don't think he's gonna be starting over Benesseo though. Um no, he no. might start over Kessier, but I even then Kessier's performance have gone up, so I don't I don't know if it's worth signing him to be a bench player, you know, or a part time player. I think we're um if we're going to stick with two holding midfields, we may well get a new coach and change formation again. But if we're going to stick with that, we need at least three that are good. Yeah. You know, all, all you are is one injury away from having to play uh, Chalanoglu out of position again. Or obviously we've got Krunic, but he's got a hairline fracture in his foot, so he'll be out for another couple of weeks at least, apparently. So we we do need depth. And I would Inter, rather Inter who have five midfielders who would all probably get into our team. And that just makes me feel a bit ill. I would rather pay the money for Bakayoko and pay, yep, him, and pay him less than bring in Matic. His contract's got to be up next season the year after, right? Uh, 2022, I think, is Bakayoko. We looked it up. Um, so that's Matic. Uh, Jan Vertonghen, I put him in. Yes. I'll tell you why I put him in over Thiago Silva. Because he's over two years younger. Uh, he's on less salary. And um, if Munier and uh, Mertens joined, that would be three Belgians. Okay, I mean, I don't really care about the Belgian thing, but yeah, I think it's if a good If all move. three joined, I would say yes, just because that's team chemistry, you know? FIFA. FIFA. All green there, baby. Or <laughs> would you rather Thiago Silva? I'd rather um, have Thiago Silva. I don't know who I'd rather. Obviously, I'm a big fan of Vertonghen. It's no secret I'm I like the Spurs. Um, but Thiago Silva, Thiago Silva. I know I said the Spurs. I don't the know. Spurs, what the San Antonio uh, the Spurs. Spurs. <laughs> Those are the ones. Um, um, one of them yeah, played the Champions League final last season. I'll put yeah, that out. Exactly. I was gonna say Vertonghen's probably got more top level Champions League experience currently over the past couple of seasons. But Thiago Silva would be romantic, but you know it's like oh reunion with Zlatan. Yeah, if he stays. Well, I also think he uh, just picked up a pretty mean injury in his yesterday, didn't he? Uh, he's going to miss a game, apparently. It's One, not yeah, as bad. Okay. As I know he got subbed off in like the 13th minute. Oh, he's so. going to miss the Dortmund return leg. I read something like that. that yeah. Um, and he been, did pretty oh. poor in the first leg against Dortmund as well. So The, the general know. consensus, though, is that he's still got it and that it, Italy would be the kind of league. But then again, he plays in a... Uh, it's I've not a farmers hearing... league. I like I like watching Liga games because they're kind of mental. Uh, but you I've know, been hearing from a lot of diehard PSG people that Thiago's kind of dropped off pretty pretty significantly this season. Dropped off doesn't mean he's bad. A team that wants to win the UCL, or you know, could he do a could he do a job for a team that just wants to crack the top four? I'm sure he could, but I don't know. Uh, I didn't ask that detail of the question. Fair. Um, number five, bin Chalanoglu off. Let's say we need a new playmaker. Mario Götze. Yeah, yeah, I'm down with that. No. no. Wait, is he still chubby? League. Is he chubby still? He's always been chubby. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so combined for uh, Dortmund and Bayern, he has 330 games, 81 Man, goals. Who does he play for in the Premier League? Uh, I guess he didn't. I don't know yeah. why I said yeah, that. Yeah, he, 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 fl- he flopped at Bayern Munich though. He did. Uh, harsh. Uh, I, think they just did. Expe- I think they just expected loads and loads yeah. of them. You know, well, because he, he had that incredible so. game, or game, the incredible season, um, the summer that they signed him on a free, you know, the, the summer Bayern won the Champions League against Dortmund there. Um, and then he had a great World Cup, obviously scoring the, the winning goal in 2014. So 
he had big moments, but then he went downhill fairly quick. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm he's like quick. Kids. I like him, but he, he's a little chubby, so he might not be. I mean, he, he's he, certainly not slower than Chalonoglu. His attacking production is better. I'm just thinking, give a guy who clearly likes to eat, put him in Italy with a lot of pasta. Yeah, but then if we keep Rebic, then he'll say, look, lay off it, have this instead. And we'll have two absolute... Loot free vegan pasta. ex bundesliga dons. Eat the cauliflower pasta. Yeah. <laughs> there is no pasta left. Have you seen the supermarket shelves? I did see that. That's crazy. What are we going to do? Um, what do you, you guys... There does, I mean, there does need, I, I feel like it'd be irresponsible. There does need to be a serious note to this and like genuinely hope that they get it under control because A, it's going to mess up, you know, a considerable portion of the rest of the season, but B, there are people dying and stuff. So like, I really do hope they get it under control as soon as possible um, and find the, the patient zero or whatever, it, whoever it is that, that's been supposedly spreading it. But um yeah, just get it. Get the shit under control, lads. Um, so that's the list of five. Um, and then one more question and we'll wrap it up. Maddie, I'll fire it to you. Christian Espinosa says, do you think Milan right now are better than Everton? Like if they played a Champions League style double over two legs, would you bet on Milan? Did he actually ask that question? Yeah, yeah. He oh my God. Oh. Uh, I think Everton would win. <laughs> Ever- Everton's form right now is unreal. They have won the he second most. He just lost 3-2. Let me so finish awesome. what I'm saying. They have won the second most amount of points since Carlo Ancelotti's been hired. He's turned the team around. Well, second they have most a goal scorer who scored 12 Liverpool. goals this season. They have attacking and creative players. We have Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Which of Everton's players would get into Milan's team at the moment? Richarlison, for sure. Uh, over maybe Andre Gomes. Richarlison over Ante Rebic, really? Yes. No. Nope. I don't know if I put him over Rebic, but Richarlison's I think Richarlison's over Rebic. Yes. Over I would put him over Rebic in a heartbeat. I put him over Chalnoglu. He he plays on the outside. He doesn't play as a. Center forward. Put Rebic in the middle. Uh, just, yeah, just swap yeah, Rebic, Cal Noglu, okay. get Cal Noglu. You could do that. Um, you don't know how to move around players? No. The, not, none of the midfielders would. If you still uh, have Andre Gomez, game. if, if uh, yeah. he's better. Andre Gomes. Sure. His leg is, like, destroyed, but didn't he, he come back? He played this weekend, and he yeah, was our he, best midfielder since, he be, since he's been injured. It's not difficult. <laughs> what? Uh, it's not difficult to be, but I'd probably be you second. Aren't you guys in another relegation battle over there in uh, Leeds or Huddersfield, wherever you're from? Completely irrelevant, but <laughs> go on. Um, what about uh, neither of the fullbacks would? Who you got a center back now? Fullbacks are. No. Gary Mina, the Colombian guy. No. Well, he's left-sided, isn't he? Is he left-footed? I don't know. Might be wrong. Lucas I know he scored Dine. against England in the World Cup. He might start. Oh, he's yeah. Not right bad. Back. At right back? Yeah, he's amazing. Yeah. He's all right. Yeah, he's pretty good. Uh, that's it, though. Um, Calvert-Lewin's not better than Rafael Liao, either. God, I, I See that hate goal, though? Calvert-Lewin so much. I think Why? he's the most overrated player. Interesting. Mm. Jonas Lossel would obviously start in there over Donnarumma. Although he's on loan with us now. Uh, so that's it. Did yeah. you just say? Just Jonas Lossel. Who would start? Oh. Yeah. Um, wanted to throw that at you as a last question, but that's about it. Then really, lads. Um, Are you guys not going to answer the question? I don't know what, what was. was. No. Uh, oh, I think... you're asking us? No, he wanted just know your opinion. He knows we're going to No, say. no, no. He did, ask, he did ask it generally. Oh, um, Milan. Easy. Yeah. I think Six we... nil. Over two legs. Each. 12 nil yeah. aggregate. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's a wrap then, I guess, guys. Uh, thank you very much for listening to another week's episode. Hopefully, we'll come back with a with a win behind closed doors or not behind closed doors, whatever it may be. Um, just keep checking out the site for the latest updates on that. Um, seen a few people have booked trips and stuff. It is always best to just check that out before you travel, obviously. Um, but in the meantime, I've been your host, Oli Fisher. You can find me on Twitter at Oli Fisher or at Kilping Chronicle for some more explicit Milan-based rants. Being joined by Anthony Torgrud. Yeah, it's been fun. Um... Happier to discuss this now than I was after the Fiorentina game, but 
all good. Um, also, do us all a great big favor. Subscribe and like this video on YouTube. Um, and you can follow me on Twitter at Torgid45. Yeah, when you subscribe on YouTube, also follow me at Madison underscore DT. Thank you very much for watching, everybody, and we will catch you in a week's time. Suso, Suso, tira Alessio, Suso, tira. Perché non tiriamo? Ma perché non tiriamo? Gol! Alessio Romagnoli, gol! Alessio Romagnoli!